Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now what I've got whizzing around in front of me here is a hero that I painted in an hour. Well, near enough an hour, maybe about an hour and 15 minutes once I'd finished with the base, but the method I'm going to show you is very quick. Now it's basically something that you've seen here on the channel before, which is using the primer color to do most of the heavy lifting for you. And there are one or two further questions answered that people have had about the upcoming Fanatic range from the Army Painter. Everything here, with the notable exception of the dirt on the base, comes from the Army Painter. So if you like this result, yeah, it is easy. Now this miniature is going to be part of my collection for Five Leagues from the Borderlands, because it's about time. I want to start playing some games again. I haven't had a game in ages, so a solo play game like Five Leagues is quite tempting. The idea here is that if I can take an hour every couple of days and paint up my heroes, I'll have a relatively nice looking force very quickly. This uses a minimum of paints, so they'll all be listed in the description below. Let's get started. Okay, so as always, once your miniature is assembled, it's time to go ahead and prime it. And here I've used Leather Brown Spray from the Army Painter. Um, seems if I'm going to carry on testing out these paints, I ought to stick to Army Painter for the most part. Now the first thing I want to do is to add a little bit of volume to the miniature. At the moment she's quite flat. And someone did ask a few days ago what it was like to actually dry brush with the Fanatic line. Uh, so what I've got is a little bit of ancient stone. And I'm going to use the small dry brush for this because I want a fair bit of control over where this goes. So as always, pick a detail where it's not going to matter if you kind of splurge or overdo it a little. And with just a few flicks, yeah, we catch the edge of that shield. That's not too shabby. So now what I'm going to do is try and go against the grain of any detail and just add a little bit of visual interest at the edges of some of the brown details. So I'm going to pick out her armor up around her collar here, her leather gear that she's wearing around her waist and what have you. Uh, I'm not too worried if I do kind of overdo it in a few spots uh, because I'm going to paint over most of this anyhow. But uh, this is a pretty good opportunity to try out that dry brushing, you know, with, with no stakes. And I've got to admit, it's not all that different from dry brushing with a regular acrylic. Uh, you tend to find, you know, an, I say ordinary paint, something like a layer paint or the like. Uh, when you dry brush with them, as time goes on, they dry out a bit and they go a little bit tacky on your brush, which is quite handy for dry brushing. Um, the resiny sort of medium that Army Painter stuff has in it, it doesn't do quite the same thing. So, in truth, I do find it a little trickier to get started with. But once you've got your eye in, it's a bit more, what's the word? It's consistent while you are dry brushing with it. So swings and roundabouts, it's not too difficult, but a light touch to start off with, definitely the way forward. So I'm going to finish off this dry brushing. That was quite a chat for a little dry brush, wasn't it? <laughs> That's going to look a little bit chalky for now, but like I said, I am going to shade this later on, so I'm not concerned. What we're going to do now is actually use a speed paint. And I know that the instructions usually suggest over a white or something very light, uh, but with Satchel Brown and the dry brushing that we've done, you'll see we'll actually get a really cool deep leather color. So what I'm going to do is use this to base coat the uh, leather bits, like her belt and any straps, and see how that looks in a couple of seconds. Now that's dried quite dark, maybe even a little darker than I thought it was going to, uh, but this is why we experiment after all. What I've got next is Fire Drake, and uh, I'm using this mostly because I want to see if this is what I thought that Saddle Brown was going to, Satchel Brown rather, was going to do. Uh, I'm just going to apply this to her breeches. Everything else is going to be pretty ordinary acrylic paints. Uh, yeah, I think this is what I had in mind for the leather, but oh well. It's a little difficult to make out on camera, but that is more the color that I had in mind for the rest of the leather. So that's not a problem, it just means I can paint the next one the way I want. What I'll move to now is topaz skin, because now we're going to start doing what I would ordinarily do, 
start from the lower layers and work our way up. So you'll see, my goodness, these uh, fanatic paints just cover so much more nicely than the, uh, the previous wall paints. Now that did cover very well, uh, but just to play it safe, I did still give it a second coat, so I've got a nice smooth finish there. Really impressed with how smooth that went on. What I've got next, this is Pharaoh Guard, and uh, I wanted something that wasn't going to be red, mostly because Mrs. Sledge always laughs at me when I paint things red and brown. She says I do it all the time. Uh, so instead, why not green? I'll have plenty of opportunity to paint some of my other heroes red if I want to. Heh. <laughs> As you see, this is a nice lightish green and covers very well. I'm going to paint her uh, jacket under the armor with this. Now that is a lovely green. I'm going back to Ancient Stone and around her hood here, there's this bit which I don't think is actually sculpted with the intention of being a trim uh, or like a fur lining, but I'm going to paint it that way because I want to break up some of the shape around the top of her here. So ancient stone, you see this covers, oh God, I cannot get over how well these really light colors actually cover. So a bit of this on the hood. Now what I've done here is to mix up half and half deep gray and black. Uh, deep gray is quite dark, but not as dark as I want it to be. And I'm just gonna paint straight over the shield with this uh, this I did water down a little more than I probably should have done, so it's definitely going to need a second coat. Now with some weapon bronze, I'm going to fill in the hilt of her weapon. Sword in this case, and it covers, well it covers really nicely actually. Now the sword itself, any buckles and things like that, I'm going to paint with plate mail metal. Uh, now I could do some of the buckles with that weapon bronze, they'd make a nice brassy color. Uh, but I think because so much of her, her body is done in this brown color, um, it's going to be better to have a little bit more visual contrast by adding some silver there instead of the brass. Now finally what I'm going to do is get some matte black and I'm going to base coat her hair in this. I thought about doing it in all sorts of weird colors, but I actually want to keep it quite simple. And once I'm finished with this, what I'm going to do is grab some leather brown out of the pot. Just go around and tidy up any of the little splurges and overshoots that I've done. And then she'll be ready to shade. Now once that's dried and settled, it's time to give them a good wash. Now what I've done here is mixed up half and half speed paint medium with the uh, strong skin shade, which is one of the new uh, ones coming in the Fanatic set. And it will be available separately too. Uh, the reason why I use this is it's quite dark, similar to uh, Strong Tone, but it has a little bit of warmth to it, which I think works super well for the miniatures that I like to paint. I'm going to make sure that this does end up in any recesses, so applying it like you would any other shade. And yeah, once I've uh, blobbed this over everything, I'll find somewhere for it to dry, give her about half an hour, and see what we end up with. Now with that dry, we've got plenty of shading, although she's a little bit flat otherwise. She's finished, but we're going to take it further because I reckon it won't take long to do slightly more and have her look a little bit better. So what I've done here is taken some topaz skin and barbarian flesh. and I've mixed that up, two parts barbarian flesh to one of the topaz skin, because I think if we were to highlight by painting barbarian flesh straight over her flesh as it is now, it's going to be quite a stark difference. So what I'm going to do is cover over most of her skin using this mix and leave just a little bit of the, uh, the shaded topaz skin in the recesses. And then you can get in with some barbarian flesh and start highlighting those bits that you want to stand out now. So I'm going to do her brows, cheekbones, on her nose, that sort of thing. All right, now we're getting somewhere. She looks kind of like Paul McGann. <laughs> what I'm going to do finally is a tiny wee bit. This is Dorado skin. This is another one of the newer ones. And uh, I've thinned this out a little bit more than I ordinarily would. Because what I want here is just final touches on her nose, corners of her brow, that sort of thing. 
Now, personally, I enjoy painting faces. I know it's not everybody's thing, but if there is a simple skill that you can practice and it'll really elevate pretty much anything you're painting, it's faces. Because the rest of this is going to be fairly simple, the face is going to carry. It's going to do the heavy lifting. What I'm moving to is Aqua Alchemy, and this is another in the uh, turquoise line, or is it teals? Anyhow, it is a couple of steps up from the ferro color that we used earlier, and I'm just going to paint a few little lines of this to highlight the green. Now, honestly, with that done, we dry brushed the leather armor earlier. There's still a little bit of that highlight showing through on the leather equipment, even though I used too dark a speed paint. Yeah, that's done. And the last thing that I'm going to do is go back to a little bit of the plate mail metal and brighten up just the edge of her sword with it. And I'll do the same with some of the uh, dark gray on her hair and along the edge of her shield. Now, once that's done, I'm going to apply a decal. Um, I've got a few spare transfers from the Cities of Sigmar box. And I figure one of those is going to work just fine on this miniature. What I'll do then is to hit it with a matte varnish. All nice and simple. And I'll finish off her base as well. So get a look at what she looks like when she's all finished. And so there at last, my adventurer is complete. Now, the green that I've used could have been anything. A blue, a red, even a purple, considering the range of the army painted colors that they do. I actually really like the teals, burgundies, and purples that they do. I think it's it's nice to have the options there. And the new Fanatic range, yeah, goodness me, it just covers leagues better than it used to do. Now, the method here can be adapted for pretty much anything. And yeah... It's fast. We're talking about an hour worth of painting. The decal itself adds a little bit extra. And once the face is painted, honestly, the miniature just comes together. The rest is just having fun for the sake of it. So you'll see bits like her boots and what have you, I haven't bothered with because it's for me. This is going to be for a game that I put miniatures on the table and I push them around for my own entertainment. Uh, Five Leagues is a solo or cooperative game, but I'm going to be playing it solo, so I don't mind too much if she's not perfect. Though in the end, I'm pretty pleased with that result for the time spent. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who keep me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. Thank you so much for your support, folks. Now, any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.